welcome to face to face and today we're going to speak about nuclear weapons we're going to talk about non-violence i'm uh, with marta enesi the granddaughter of do it today and uh, she has been an activist uh, against nuclear weapons and marta is out of prison right now on a very restricted confinement in uh, alfred house and without an uh, internet connection and she's joining us over the phone so uh, Marta has been uh, uh, arrested during a non-violent action who took part of the uh, cloud share action where seven activists enter the King Bay Naval Submarine Base in St. Mary, Georgia, the world's biggest naval submarine base, home of the Trident nuclear powered submarine, the Atlantic Fleet Ballistic and the Guided Missile Submarines. In a previous interview we did back in 2018, we uh, cover our, our process of fighting nuclear weapons until um, she got to court. So in this show today, we're going to go over the judgment and uh, what we call justice and the sentence, the jail times, and our uh, uh, present situation with limited movement and communication. So, Marta, welcome to Face to Face. And I'm really sorry for all the trouble on your situation. And I admire the, the courage you and, and your friend have been to, to really show the world to stand against nuclear weapons, who are uh, uh, um, really the, the worst uh, enemy of humankind. Welcome. Oh, thank you for having me. Thank you so much for having me. Martha, you want to, to go over a little bit what was the process from where we left it in 2018? Maybe for, for people who have no idea what, how nuclear weapons and, and justice are not friends and you cannot, yes. the Chazis system explained the, the, the concept you, you worked on for many years. Yes, we did the action on April 4th, um, 2018, which was the 50th anniversary of the state killing of Martin Luther King Jr. And we did not go to trial until October of uh, 2019. And we were, of course, found guilty on all 28 counts. And over the course of that um, trial, um, someone on the jury asked the question about um, whether nuclear weapons were being kept at the base of Kings Bay or not. Was it fact or was it speculation? And the court refused to answer that question. So we were found guilty very quickly. Um, the jury had no capacity to really comprehend what our action was, the context of it within the U.S. nuclear arsenal, these weapons being placed on hair trigger alert. And then because of COVID, um, there was a big delay in our sentencing. Uh, we did not want to um, give up our right to appear in person. So there were a lot of delays. And then we ultimately ended up going by videotape um, being sentenced. And I was sentenced November um, 13th of uh, 2020. And then I self-reported December 14th, um, a month later, to Danbury Women's uh, Camp Prison. Mm -hmm. And then I spent five months there. And now I have been here at this halfway house for three weeks, and they're not telling me how long they're keeping me. They say they want to keep me till July 27th, which gives me only one month of home confinement out of my 10-month sentence. So, I mean, it, it's absolutely crazy that someone who did an act of nonviolence against something who maybe doesn't exist end up having to go all this trouble. And, and so, um, can you describe a little bit more? The whole project was to show people what are the nuclear weapons are all about. And it's, it's a complication of going out and talking about the nuclear weapon. It's, it's, it's a challenge. It's a very big challenge. You know, the United States nuclear arsenal is hidden in plain sight in front of our eyes. And, you know, I grew up with the duck and cover um, experience in elementary school. And my kids really heard very little about nuclear weapons. They were born in 1977 and 1982. And now my grandkids, of course, hear very little 
if anything about why I'm in prison. And yeah, we don't talk about it. Um, Joseph Biden, the second Catholic president in the history of the United States since John F. Kennedy, he, in his um, acceptance inauguration speech, said nothing about the nuclear arsenal. Um, it's something that the media seems to be very um, reticent to report on. Um, we know that um, the Trump administration uh, very quickly worked to dis dismantle many of the treaties that we have in place, you know, to, to stop this nuclear arms race. And we now have a new arms race happening. Yeah. And yeah. yes. And, and now we're talking about how evil China is and how we have to encircle China. I know. So, I mean, these weapons are on hair trigger alert and nobody's talking about them, except Pope Francis did say Absolutely. they need to be And he was very vocal abolished. about it. Yeah. It, it, yes, and recently, yeah. very most recently, Cardinal Supich of Chicago has written an op-ed. I have not had a chance to read it, but he is clearly stating how we have um, thumbed our nose at the Non-Proliferation Treaty since 1970, and that the Catholic Church um, does want to see nuclear abolition. Yeah, and he was vocal of supporting the, 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 the ban treaty on nuclear weapon where I can got got the, the Nobel yeah. uh, Prize for it. So um, um, yes, and that all happened after our action. Yes. Yeah. Very in, in few few minutes. So so the the jail times was was just for people to well, figure. Yeah, the United States have has um, two and a half million prisoners. It's you know the largest prison population in the developed so-called democratic world the countries mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the bureau the federal bureau of prisons has an 84 billion dollar annual budget and i heard stories from women about you know taking the fall um others other uh, co-defendants um turning them in to save themselves prosecutors uh, working with judges you know there was one woman who didn't even really fully understand how and why she got in prison and, and how she, what she was found guilty of and how. So, and then of course, there's always the issue of addiction. Um, a lot of the women have uh, gambling addictions. Um, I was at um, Danbury where it was mostly white collar crime, um, but the system is horribly broken. And the system is horribly corrupt. And the judges, the prosecutors, um, they just work hand in glove to feed this system. And, you know, a real good example of profiteering is this halfway house that I'm currently being held yeah. at. Can you describe a little bit more what, um, what, is, what does the idea of this house came from and how this is hand up now? Well, I was given a 10 month sentence and I spent two right immediately after the action down in Georgia County jails. And so, I was given 10 months. I have now completed um, nearly six. So there's two months remaining on my sentence and I meet all of the criteria for home confinement in that I have a functional home to go to. I am financially stable. I have no addiction history. And they just, um, you know, the halfway houses are a good thing for certain people to get back on their feet. if They've been incarcerated for a very long time and have to figure out where they're going to live and how they're going to support themselves. Right. But it's, complete, it's completely irrelevant and inappropriate to in my case. case. Yeah. And I think, I think what the BOP has done, has, they have labeled me a violent offender. And that is one of the criteria is that you have to be a nonviolent offender. So, you know, they're calling me a violent offender for spray painting and hanging banners. And so it's yeah. just, a, it's a real, it's a catch 22 situation. Yeah. And then we, we need to educate them to, to, to teach them what is nonviolence because um, right. <laughs> I think they are. So cutting a, cutting a padlock is, is, is violent. Yeah. Dropping a nuclear bomb is not yeah, violent. It's not, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, so what is your uh, uh, vision of the situ situation or your situa personal yeah. situation now? And what, what is also the situation about nuclear weapon in the future? Because 
I know the technology, it's really, it become like fashion now in, in many fields. So I just wanted to, to understand your worry about this situation. Yes, well, in um, December of 2019, a nuclear warhead was deployed from Kings Bay and they call them W76-2 and they are low yield warheads, um, five to eight uh, megaton. And, you know, they're making them more usable. They're making them more movable and ready to use. And this is all an utter violation of the non-proliferation treaty. We are now talking about spending $100,000 a minute over the next 10 years you know, equal to almost $3 trillion to upgrade our new nuclear arsenal. And this is all in violation of the non-proliferation treaty. Mm -hmm. And of course, Do Do Donald Trump, you know, took out the, um, the INF treaty, pulled out of the Open Skies Treaty, and it sounds like Biden is saying he's not going back into that treaty. Yeah. So it's a pretty... It's a very sordid picture. And and for your situation, how do you before we we uh, we finish this uh, this discussion? How do you um, do you see your next few few weeks? I think I'm stuck here. Um, I'm trying to get my attorney to um, write to the BOP saying that I meet all of the. It's called the CARES Act home confinement. And just to point out that I do meet all of that criteria. And meanwhile, I have to jump through the hoops here, um, behave, and I have to get permission to step out of the house. Yeah. I have to call when I'm out of the house. I have to yeah. call when I'm coming back to the house. And I have signed, signed up for some volunteer work at a local um, women's and uh, children's um, transitional shelter. Um, they want me to do gardening with the children and some clerical work. So what they really want to do is make people work. And I'm 65 years old. I've already had a 30 year career in earning money and paying my war taxes as an occupational therapist. And since retirement, I have not worked for wages and I don't intend to. So I'm looking for volunteer work. And maybe they'll let me go at the end of June. Maybe they'll keep me here till the end of July. I just don't know. Okay. Martha, meanwhile, my, sorry, go ahead. Meanwhile, my 70 year old husband is at home putting in the garden all by himself, and my daughter and her three children live right next door. And, you know, my, my labor is needed with my family. I know, I'm pretty sure. And your love is needed for your family. Yeah. Martha, is this thing <laughs> that people should know and then they can do uh, as in, you know, in, in helping in one way or another? I don't know. I'm not going to recommend that uh, we inundate this place with letter writing to call for my release. You know, I don't, I don't know. I mean, everything is so tricky these days and, and people live in real fear of, of speaking out and you know, with the prison population, you have to toe the line and, and put up with injustices because it just gets you in more trouble when you resist the the, the horrible conditions. Yeah. So I, I don't I don't know what to recommend. Prayer. Prayer is a good one. <laughs> Thank you so much, Marta, for being today with us. And you know, I wish you the, the, the best in, in this circumstance. And uh, I, I'm pretty sure we will talk very soon and hopefully we'll be in better circumstances. Thank you so much. Thank you.